Hello and welcome to Acton TV sports coverage of Colonial Football. I'm Tim Lito with Mark Shire here Good evening. in Balmy Western. This is like the Bahamas here. I'm this telling is beautiful. you, short sleeves and the whole suit match here as we get set to take on the Westford Great Ghosts and very much an arch rival over the last several years. And of course, Thanksgiving Day games coming up and all yep. that stuff. But uh, Mark, so before we get started in this story for tonight, we'll be right back after this word from our pregame sponsor, Acton Farming. I'm Saad Dino, pharmacist and co-owner of Acton Pharmacy at 563 Mass Ave in West Acton. We offer prescriptions, medical supplies, homeopathic remedies, vitamins and delivery service. Our new state-of-the-art clean room allows us to provide compounded medications for patients who require a customized dose or a drug that's not commercially available. Don't let football season turn into a flu season at your home. Come into Acton Pharmacy and get your flu shots and all your medication needs. Welcome back to Acton TV Sports coverage of Colonials Football. Now it's time for the Acton Pharmacy pregame show. Welcome back everybody, Tim Little, Mark Shire. Last week the Colonials lost a tough one, Mark, I tell you to a powerhouse team tough. in Natick, 21-17, but you know, give the Colonials credit. They really played tough, and they played like a top 10 team. They really did, was. absolutely. And it's exciting to see, you know, every time we come off a game like that, you know, what's the next game gonna be like, and I'm really excited to, be, to see what, you know, it's, it's, this is a character test tonight, and I'm really excited to see what AB is gonna do with all that. But hey, first of all, we got Westford here tonight. It's on this field. There's been a lot of great games. Westford's 0-2 this season, Mark. They didn't play last week, but last year, you know, four and seven under rookie coach Adam Gagne, and uh, you know, AB won big last year. But this is a new team this year, and they got a lot of weapons. And you know, with that spread offense that Westford plays, you got to really account for a lot of kids. They got, uh, you know, sophomore and quarterback Connor Dagenhart. He's a big kid. 6'2", 175 got a pounds. a good size, yes. And James Antonelli, uh, son of the principal That's of, right. of the uh, of Westford Academy. And he was, he was last year's quarterback. Yeah, absolutely. And now he rolls over to his big tight end. So he's a, he's a big guy and a you know, great athlete. We've seen a lot of Antonelli athleticism in Westford over the years. So I was watching Connor warm up. The kid can throw. The yeah. kid can throw. He can throw deep. And I actually thought, you know, he could throw, uh, you know, good good out pass to the sideline as well. So, not a lot of talent on the uh, at the running back spot, but uh, they have quick receivers in Westford. They can throw the ball downfield, and I think I, I think this is really about Coach Gagne getting back to the basics. And I think this is think of this as Westford's first game of the season, and we just, it's hard to know. It what, really what, is. What it's to a, find, it's their really you know? first DCL large game of the season, yep. and Coach Gagne said after the first two games, they played two, two very tough teams in Lowell and Chelmsford. He said, we're just going to get back to the basics, blocking and tackling. Yep, I agree. And, you know, I think, you know, Lowell and Chelmsford, two very difficult teams, so it's, it's hard to really understand what's going on here. But the Great Ghost, they only ran 30 offensive plays, very, very limited. So I think the exposure, even from a film point of view, Mark, is going to be difficult. So with that, you know, tell me about A.B. and what's coming up here. Well, I'll tell you, I, uh, the definition of insanity, Tim, <laughs> is to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. And I think like a lot of uh, A.B. football players and football parents, uh, what I did is I watched the fourth quarter of last week's game about three times. <laughs> and every time I watched it, I expected A.B. to win the game. And a lot of things had to happen for A.B. not to win the game. Natick really stole this one from Acton Boxborough. And I think A.B. really outplayed Natick, except for that first pass uh, to, uh, to Dunlap uh, that went for a touchdown. We basically shut down their passing game, uh, intercepted the ball four times, and it was really four plays that absolutely killed us. One where J.T. Kelly uh, uh, ran to about the 26-yard line and it was called back for a penalty. And then in the first half, Liam Murray, who had scored his first touchdown uh, from the one-yard line, intercepted a pass, went 36 yards. That would have put us up 21-7, to and that was called back for a block in the back. And then, of course, Tim, there was the fumble that wasn't a fumble. 
on the on the on the fifty yard line. Did you see that replay? I saw the replay, <laughs> and I swear that was not a fumble, but uh, it was called a fumble. Natick recovered, and of course uh, the killer play uh, was one where J T Kelly, who just absolutely had a tremendous game, he had 166 yards rushing, two intercepts two interceptions, return punch, return kickoffs was all over the field. He intercepted right about the five yard line, ran it back about 30 yards and fumbled and Natick came in for the touchdown. Now I wanted to show you the, the winning play because what happened at that point is that Olsen, their quarterback, had not really, he just did one keeper the whole game. And as you can see, what everybody was doing, and particularly our linebackers, Nick Clabeau, and, and Liam Murray, they were, go, they were looking off tackle to stop Chad Kidd, who had just burned us for about 200 yards. And Olsen just had, you can see, just had a easy way into the end zone. And that put Natick ahead 21-17. That was the end of it. But you know what, Tim? We stopped Natick, we got the ball back, and like you said, we went down fighting. And uh, I'm hoping that A.B. just bounces back this week, comes up with a really good effort, because we've got only five days to our next game. We play Newton South next Thursday, so it would be, be good to get a lead and to be able to have a few of our starters uh, uh, sit out the fourth quarter if we could do that. Well, I agree, Mark. I, you know, I think it, it really was a, like a number seven team against a number eight team. I mean, that's, we, we looked like a legitimate top ten team that fateful night. and. Uh, you know, I think it's a, you know, it's all the cards on the table here. This is, you know, Westford and AB when these two teams get together. Strange that, things happen. It's really, it's, yeah, I think it's something sure. to do with the gray ghost Absolutely. and the uh, ancient colonial yes, uh, you yes. know, folklore going on. So I'm ready. What do you say, Mark? All right, let's, let's play, play some football. This has been the Acton Pharmacy Pre-Game Show. I'm Saad Dino, pharmacist and co-owner of Acton Pharmacy at 563 Mass Ave in West Acton. We offer prescriptions, medical supplies, homeopathic remedies, vitamins and delivery service. Our new state-of-the-art clean room allows us to provide compounded medications for patients who require a customized dose or a drug that's not commercially available. Don't let football season turn into a flu season at your home. Come into Acton Pharmacy and get your flu shots and all your medication needs. Today's game has been brought to you by Gallant Insurance, the Steinberg Lolly Charitable Foundation. Parsip and Stewart Family Law. Shire, Caton and Epstein, PC. Post Road Carpet One. And by the Alright, here we go, Mark. Oh, we can. Westford is ready to kick off with uh, Tom Jacobson. Getting ready to boot that ball and back deep for the Colonials is Dylan Caldwell, Nick McCarthy, and J.T. Kelly on a beautiful night in Westford. And it's deep, and it looks like can't pick up that number. That's Caldwell. Caldwell taking Biggest over the left side Caldwell. across the 30. Uh, let's say at the 30, first and 10 for the Colonials. All right, Tim, I'd, ra I'd rather be on offense to start this game. Chelmsford held Tackle the ball for over Jack eight and a half Arizona. minutes against the Westford defense. It would be good to, to get a long drive going, put a score up, and uh, just see how our line can handle Westford's D-line. I agree, Mark. Let's just go out and attack here. Double wing, first play. First time I've ever seen A.B. line up with this. They run a fake zip and a dive up the middle, and well covered by the Gray Ghost. Maybe about 32, two yards. Gabe Cormier. Gabe uh -huh. Cormier on a carry. Tackle made by number 65, Alex Chernakis. Alex, AJ. yeah, AJ Chernakis, one of their captains, is really the mainstay of that defensive line. They went right at him. And here's the offensive line for the Colonials. Sean Cronin went to center. 
Dana Weaver, right guard, Griffin Bowden, right tackle, and we'll take it in the next play here. This time we run the fly outside, and JT Kelly is all wrapped up for about a two or three yard loss. Finished that uh, offensive Hand lineup off here. JT Kelly. In just a minute, here we go. Number 65, Chernoskis. Backfield, Matt Cotter, a quarterback, Gabe Cormier, fullback, JT Kelly. A great game last week, Dylan Caldwell and Jack Hoggard. Well, Westford has come with an inspired first two plays on defense. Like we said when we opened up, with these two teams, they get together. All right, wing right formation, a little throw, and Dylan Caldwell with the completion, but only a couple yards, and it bring up fourth and long. Yeah, he just basically gets back to the original line Passes of scrimmage. to number seven, Dylan Caldwell. And, uh, Brought down by number Connor one, Case Brett is going to have to kick. So Westford, very impressive first series on defense. Nick Florio back deep for the Gray Ghosts. It's a low snap, and he gets it off. A quick end over end kick. It'll land about midfield and stop right there, and it will be down by the Colonials. So good field position for the Gray Ghosts. Well, Tim, you know, the Great Ghosts have really started their games very well against, against Lowell, field. one of the best teams in the state. They were only down 12 to 6 at halftime. So they've had very good first halves. They were within one score of Chelmsford at halftime. So they, they start out very strong. They've had very difficult second halves, but their first halves have been uh, very impressive. Connor Degenhart, at quarterback. Here's the blitz, coming right in. Degenhart looked back to pass, under pressure, throws it over the middle and short. Intended for number 11, Nick Florio. Is intended for number 11, Nick Fiorillo. Nick okay, Fiorillo. That, was a, that, that was a It'll jail break down. on that first play. Now Westford goes into the hurry up. They like Natick, they like to play up tempo. Not gonna have a lot of chances for, uh, for replays here. This time to give us the number 31 as he cuts up the middle. Uh, ben Cassidy. Head off to number 31, I talked Ben to, Cassidy. I talked about Ben as we opened up, Mark. Ben's, you know, just a, an average back, but Talk runs with good ball Jack control. Bogart. All right, third and four. Gain a six on the play. It'll be third and four. Westford changes the play. Yeah, uh, this could be a pass play here. When the, when the running back is parallel to the quarterback, nope, they're going. They that got it stopped. It's to going Cassidy. to be fourth down, fourth and two. I'm feeling that Westford is going to be going for this. Yeah, they're lining Checked up that way. 50, Kevin Kai. It's actually a pretty good spot from an A-B perspective. It's a, it's a good two yards, Mark. It's fourth and two. Okay, they're calling an audible here. Back to pass, goes Diggenhardt, looks downfield, rolls out here, under pressure, throws the ball away. Oh, that was a great pursuit by Jack Hogarth, and it gave Diggenhardt no opportunity to make that. Here's the replay that, uh, here, Mark. You'll, you'll see the pressure coming up. All right, look at, yeah, look at Jack coming in on him. Here we, here we, nope. Here we go. Nope, we didn't get that one, but... Uh, Trust me, Jack Hogard uh, made a great play on the ball, and now it's A.B. ball on good field position at their 42. Hogard split out to the near side of the field. This one, we run at 35 power. J.T. Kelly and scrambling for about a 13-yard run back to his old self. You know, everybody, everybody one, thinks Brett that J.T. Kelly is this kind of scat back, speedy kid. But, you know, I mean, he is a very solid runner, and I've been very impressed with his inside running and, and his yards after, after being hit. I agree. We were talking about that all last game, and I, I bet you the yards after carry average is four. All right, slot right. First and ten, again, up the middle. Big, big push. By the Colonials. Number 32, Gabe, Gabe Cormier. Gabe Cormier takes, uh, runs into four. Here, watch the power play here, Mark, as we, uh, we bring this up. You see Gabe Cormier 
and just takes on a couple, another three yards. After yeah, that and that's a line hit. play. That's a line play, too. Seven on the, the play, line play was so impressive last week against the Red Hawks. Dana, Dana Weaver had about 150 yards himself running last week. Double wing. Right up the middle. Goes That's Dave a first Cormier, down. Picks, picking it up. Yeah, I think we he crossed. Rolled, up to 32. He, he, ro he rolled right over A.J. for a first down there. They marked the ball just shy to 35 of the Grey that Ghost. Looks like a, they're, oh, they're going to call a measurement Jonathan on Scammon. this. Very close. No gain on the play. It'll but be third and three. They call that no gain on the Wait a minute. No, 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 no. no. That's it's a not serious third, game. It's not third and three. It's, uh, it's a measurement. They're, Official look, timeout for they're looking at it very Official carefully here. here. Here's a replay. And you can watch oh, you yeah. can watch Gabe roll right over 65. AJ Chernakis. I think we got it. I think we got a first down. Yes, we do. It's first and ten. First AB. And we're at the 36-yard line, moving the ball with 6.38 to go in the first. By the way, Tim, Natick recovered from the law from, from, from the win last week and beat Wellesley 35 to 7. So <laughs> they're 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 back in the comfortable Bay State League now. Doubling uh, the Grego showing blitz up the middle, and it's a perfect play call. Gabe Cormier rumbles up for close to another first down, and right to by the blitz. All right, let's take a look at that because you can see every, everybody's seven, blitzing, Scanlon. and that just opens the whole area for Gabe to go just right up the middle. Play is good for nine yards. Take a look at that blitz. One. Second down and one for AB. See the. Great Ghost respecting us with some backs here. We'll run against oh, that play, and they stop. blitz the hole on the uh, power. Yeah, that's a great stop by number 44. That's Bunyan. He is their best defensive player, Matt Bunyan, linebacker. Tackle me by number 44, Matt Bunyan. That's a great name for a football player. <laughs> yeah, it beats Paul, Paul's, Paul's great, great, play, great, great grandson. But Matt Bunyan has, has been their top defender in the first two games. We got to convert a third down here. Third and about four. Cotter back the pass. In the flats goes JT Kelly as he turns up field. And he comes up for a first down and more all the way up to the 15 yard pass line. Pass is complete to okay. number 29, Kelly. Matt was so careful with that Double pass. Watch, and, this, <laughs> yeah. watch this play there, Mark, when JT Plays Kelly good showing not only Box good running, good hands down. here as he catches his in stride and turns it upfield. Yeah, that, was, that was a perfect pass by Cotter because that, as you say, it hit Kelly in perfect stride there to make that extra yardage. And we're at the 16-yard line with a first down. JT Kelly, look at the, look at the quickness Head when he cuts up from this angle. We have great seats tonight, gang. I'll tell you that. This is the best vantage point we've Tackle had in a long 20, time. Eric Jacobson. Okay, we got a timeout here. Timeout, Westford. Let's take a look at the uh, the top 20, the Globe top 20 this week, and Game see uh, see who's in the six. top 20 Westford and uh, and who's timeout. out. We have no DCL teams in the top 20, but as you can see, Lowell had, that beat Westford is number three in Eastern Massachusetts, and uh, Lowell beat Westford uh, 33 to six. And we're still waiting. If we had beaten Natick, obviously, we would have been in that top 20. We'd probably be 13 or 14. But uh, we're going to have to go five, six games now yeah. to, to get into this group. But Zaverian won today. They beat Barnstable 35 to 7. They are very strong this year. Interesting to see Everett as number five. In yeah, that they're, they'll, 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 be, they'll be there at the end, I have a feeling. <laughs> JT Kelly at wing back. And now he back to the halfback position. JT Kelly again on and the to 35 Kelly. power in the slot. He gets about another two or three to bring up third and about. Tackle made like by number two, Jacobson. Three yards there, Mark, for first down. First down is about the seven. This would be a great time for a bootleg. And a three and a play, it'll be third I know and I three. Always, I always say that, a, a fake to Kelly and a, a naked bootleg right to the corner there.
the arch play with Dylan Caldwell and not oh, they're really there. pushing. You can see, you can see Pete Raskoskis really just trying to push that pile and get close to the first down, and it's going to be a, a tough fourth down conversion. It's about a little over two yards on fourth down. Pete did everything he could to uh, to get that closer Tackle to the first down marker. Satish Bisa. Not going for the field goal. Fourth and about two. A long two. Flex. Overload right. And they toss to the weak side of the field. And Dylan Colwell bangs. Oh, that's Kelly, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. JT Kelly. Number 29, Kelly. Think about Dylan Colwell. <laughs> JT Kelly. Wow, the acceleration. This kid. He's got wheels. What? Talk about number seven, Scammon. You can't appreciate it. And number 44, and, Bunyan. And the beauty is, is the way he just glides and he, how he can run sideways. You know, you've got north-south runners. This is a east-west, north-south, northeast, northwest, southwest runner. He almost has like a jump skip on a sideways motion there. You saw him, I mean, this kid's got, very, very explosive. All right, we've got uh, down. First, first and goal here. And we have a uh, Westford player. Big crowd down. tonight. Yeah, it's a you know Saturday night. It's uh, you know everybody's a little bit out of rhythm. You know you're in that rhythm of that that Friday night game, and you just uh, it, this looks like a Saturday night crowd. Which uh, you got to give uh, Westford uh, credit along those I have a lines. Special they offer always, tonight. It's always a good crowd at Westford. Opener. Mike Acton box. You buy your 2014 football keepsake program. Yeah, there's you always, there's always a been a lot of school spirit in Westford. You know, the Don't community really gets behind the teams, all the teams, not just the football team, and other but all the other shots. teams. And, and a lot of Programs the other teams have been very, very, very good. At entrance and throughout the bleachers. All right, who do you give the ball to? Well, I think uh, J.T. Kelly has uh, been uh, that would, that the, would the be, horse That would drive. be a good choice. Uh, <laughs> number 32 uh, would be a good choice. Gabe, first. All right, Westford player, number 65, A.J. Oh, that's a huge loss for Westford if he can't get go back in the game. A.J. just bolsters that line, and they're, they're carrying him off the field. Great player and a great captain for the, the Gray Ghosts. It looks like a bad ankle, I would guess. Oh, that's a shame. All right, they're giving him a big hand, and let's 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 hope it's not serious. All right, first and goal, flex. They may go. They may, they're going they right go the middle. The power, and there's a Hands tunnel. Up to 29, Kelly. They went right into JJ. AJ's area. They went right over the middle of that line, and uh, good for an Acton Boxborough touchdown. And they scored. Watch this flex power, Mark. Go ahead, take it away. Look at this. Look at the tunnel. Oh, look he at took that. Took the subway right across the oh, goal line. Oh, it looked like the ball squirted out, but it passed the goal line. We don't want any. We don't want any more balls squirting out. We don't want any more close calls. All right. See you. AB on the board. One more time there. Go, Here's a replay. Okay, Connor Cates in the kick. Brendan Duhamel will attempt the point I after. Think I'm sorry, Brendan, Brendan Duhamel. Duhamel on the kick is blocked. Oh, it's being returned. And it's being this returned. Could, this could be two points. This could be. This Westford. could be two points. It's a, it's a foot race. It's a foot race, and Westford is going to come up with two points. Oh, you don't see that very often, Tim. Wow. And th there are no flags on the field, and it's six to two, AB. Wow. Well, you don't see that. I don't think I've ever seen that in a high school game. I have never, I have never seen that anywhere, actually. I've seen it in a Pop Warner game. <laughs> I think uh, against me. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at that play. That's a play you're not going to see very often. Point after attempt was blocked by number seven, and I, John Scammon. And that's recovered that by number Fiorello. Nick Fiorello. Nick Fiorello, who is their, one of their Returns wide receivers their and a speed guy. Academy receives two points. And we're up by four. 
That's the wrong player to have the ball go into and is blocked. It's no, the no, you want, you, kick, want a lineman, the you want a lineman to get yeah. that ball and, and rumble about 10 yards and then fall down. Fiorello is uh, one of their really good pass receivers, and uh, Fiorello is also their kick, one of their kick returners. Like we said, we're, uh, we're at Westford. It's Westford AB. Strange things are going to happen. Back for Westford Academy is number two, Tom Jacobson. And number 23, Tristan Lee. Number two, Tom Jacobson. And number 23, Tristan Lee. Back to return. Brendan Duhamel will kick off for Acton Boxborough. Duhamel ready to kick. Here we go. Kick is deep. There it is. There's a reverse. Reverse off the kickoff outside across the 30. Kickoff is First taken down. by number two, Jacobson. Jacobson with the kickoff. Handed off to number 23, Lee. Yeah, they love to run that reverse on kickoff returns. Not sure it worked very effectively that time, Mark. They would have been better taking it upfield. But... Well, the next, the next time you'll probably see a fake reverse because they run the fake reverse quite often, too. Lee is brought down at the Westford Academy 29-yard line, where it'll be first and 10. First and okay, 10 JT Kelly is on Jacobson. You can see him lining right up, man-to-man -man on Jacobson. And Westford goes up the middle for about three or four. And that was Cassidy, I believe. And off to number one, uh, Brett number Fitzgerald. One. Fitzgerald this time. Tackle made by number 55, Jack Foster. Jack Foster back and playing. Three to play. It'll be second Jack, and seven. Jack missed last week, but he's back this week. Digging our back to pass over the middle and complete. Look at, at that throw. Did you see that throw? Digging Hart's pass is complete to number two. We're, we're talking Jacobson. about watching him warm up. Play and is that, good for Westford that, Academy. First down. Watch well, this throw, like I said, at practice. He steps back, looks down over the middle, and he throws just like a fastball. Wow. Back live. And this kid is a sophomore. This time, it's hand off to number, one, off to Fitzgerald. number one, Fitzgerald, for about three or four. Now, you have to understand, Tim, in his first varsity game as a sophomore against Jack Lowell, Foster. he threw the ball 30 times. So he's he's not fast. He'll, he'll put it up. Second and five. It's a big kid. He stands up. He's got great vision. That's for sure. He can see the whole field. With, at six two. They run the ball again to Fitzgerald, and, to and he one, gets a first down. That play is working. As they're getting some guards up the hole here. Okay, they're going to line up again. We, we, we can't get replay Liam on this. Murray. They're coming right up to the line of scrimmage. Play is good for Westford Academy. First down. First and 10 on the 41 of the Colonials. OK, looks like an audible. Got a call from the coach. Could be putting it up here. Back deep. It's Dugan Hardy. It's a tear pattern. Oh, oh a great God. play by JT Kelly. Right at the last minute, he times it. Turns around, no flag. That's a great cornerback play. I want to tell you, that is a great play on Dang both Hart's sides pass. because that pass was absolutely perfect. That was 45 yards in the air, right on the money. Pass is broken up and by 29. JT, JT Kelly, Kelly was right there to Second break down. up that pass. But that, that was a throw. That was a major league throw there. Wow. All right, second and ten. Duganart this time with a run play, and it's Cassidy, I believe, up the middle for about four or five. They're getting too yeah, much up are. the middle. Yeah, they're getting a push there. Hand off to number 31, Ben Cassidy. O line is really getting a push against uh, AB right now. Tackle made by number 33, Kyle Tobin. Kyle Tobin. Okay, on a the big tackle. third down Gain conversion six the play, here. Only third and four. Looks like, see if Murray is coming on a blitz. 
Cassidy's in the backfield. Here's Murray timing it. They give it to Cassidy up the middle and a big push again and it is and close to a first down Cassidy. depending on the ball mark there, Mark. Well, depending on the spot, they may have a measurement here for the first down. Looks to be very Michael close. Number 48, Liam Murray. Yeah, they're, they're, they're going to call for a measurement here. Liam Murray on the stop. Let's take another look at this play. Once again, once again, the offensive line of uh, Westford is getting, getting a good push off. Let's take a look at this play. Okay. Here we go, up the middle. Big push and see where yeah, they spot they're, they're it. Really, yeah, they're really down, Academy, first, first down for Westford Academy, and they're, and they're 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 sealing off our uh, defenders there. Cassidy up the middle. 31, Cassidy. And a good late push yeah. again for about three or four yards. Too, too, much, too much yardage. They're getting four or five yards on each carry. Tackle made by number 11, Matt Cotter. And when your defensive backs are making those tackles, you know you have issues. All right. Got a timeout at the end, the 10 seconds to go. Timeout, A.B.? I, I, I didn't see who called that there, Mark. There's only only 10 seconds to go in the quarter it could here. Be out, it could be out of sync with the scoreboard. And it could, it could be, be like soccer time. time, you know, <laughs> like they're playing extra time now. It might be that the uh, officials are trying to get a handle on the clock, too, but it shows 10 seconds to go in the first quarter. Well, the baseball score on that scoreboard. Six to two in the bottom of the fifth. Well, Newton South's bubble burst today. Uh, they were averaging over 50 points a game, and uh, Lincoln Sudbury came in and beat them 35 to 14. So I think LS is uh, really going to be also the strength of the DCL large. Familiar territory. Yeah, we've been there before. Beaconheart looks to pass over to over the Ooh. flat, and uh, boy, that ball yeah, was Fiorello. batted up in the air. Yeah, Fiorello could have had Fiorello that one pass intended for number right 11, in his hand. Fiorello. This you know, kid's so, going to be good. Sometimes, you know, if you got a real, strong, if you have a real strong arm quarterback, sometimes he can just throw it too hard for his receivers, and Third. that ball just bounced between the one and the one off of Fiorello. Third, and Third six. down. Communicating with his coach right now on the play call. Cassidy. Oh, Bob good stop. Nick, Nick Clabeau, great stop on that. And Kevin Kai really coming in. Tackle made by number 50, Kevin Kai. And it's fourth down now for the Gray Ghost. That's the end of the first quarter. Here's Cassidy. With the score, I can Taking up off tackle and Academy getting really two. ahead of the blockers, but stop. You see AB starting to synchronize against Yeah, them. yeah. It, take, it, it takes a while, but uh, Clabeau and Kevin Kai made a nice, nice play on that, and that's the end of the first quarter. And uh, it's really what we expected, Mark. You know, out of the gates, it's, it's, it's always a chess match between these two teams out of the gates. And then, you know, it's usually one team gets you know, pulls it together and pulls away, unless it's um, you know, well, most every of once the, in a while. Most, most of the done. time, it's been AB. Uh, the last few years, the first 15 years, I think we won every game. But uh, since then, it's been a bit of a tractor pull over the last few years. Absolutely. Uh, just want to talk about ABSAF for one minute. 
Uh, the Acton Boxborough Student Activities Fund, APSAF has raised over $1 million for Acton Boxborough Student Activities. The APSAF tax has actually gone up from $150 to $175, but it is still the best deal in town. Gets you into all the sporting events, uh, gets you into the all the, dr the drama, and also all the Red Sox playoff games this year. <laughs> uh, Rick uh, Gazzardi is uh, head of APSAF this year and uh, doing a great job, and get your APSAF pass. All right, fourth right. down and three. Big play here. There's a blitz. Blitz at the middle. Oh, there's, there's a hole. There. There's a hole. And there's no flag on the play that I can see after that hole. Oh, that was a clear was hole. Obvious. Second arch pass intended for number 11, Fiorillo. And that was right in front pass of the. Pass is incomplete. Uh, right in front of the uh, ref there. We would have declined uh, it anyhow. <laughs> at any rate, AB takes over on downs. Acton Boxborough takes over on downs. Okay, six to two. 10.53 to go in the first half, and A.B. Flag was a holding call the against Western Academy. Oh, there, there was is. a flag. Penalty is declined. Okay, they declined the call, but they did call that hold. Thank you. Good job. On the 24. See uh, Westford now putting more in the box here. It's nine players in the box. We're going to Delaware off the Hand off to number 29, Kelly. The JT Kelly gets two or three. That was a good call against that, that defense. We just got tripped up there. One tackle away from. Tackle made by number two, Tom Jacobson. Run. Well, you know what's going to happen. Uh, Eight to three in the play. It'll well, be second and seven. If they continue to put nine in the box, it's just a matter of time before you crack that seal. And once you Western crack, Academy calls once you crack the seal, then, then, you, then you're just headed uh, to pay dirt because. Uh, uh, nine in the box really is difficult when you've got when you've got really talented runners like AB. Has. And we we'll draw your attention to the home opener special tonight. If you buy your 2014 football keepsake program, you receive a free popcorn from the snack shack. Wow, you get a free popcorn. You have a chance to I'm going to do that. Rosters, see baby photos of the senior players. I want to see baby photos of the senior shots. players, and I can get programs free and rally popcorn. towels are That's available at bad. entrance and throughout the bleachers. Not a bad deal at all. All right, second and seven. Little 23 buck play and good penetration by AB. Almost to number 32, close to the first yeah. down. Cormier. Yeah, that's going to be good for a first down based on that spot. Just over the, just over the line. They're going to move the chains. First down. Good run by Cormier. Love this and play. UC 24 Dave. buck actually off the right side here as he picks his way up. Gets low at that last point. Yeah, that's what got him the first down. Another Hand big time run. Cormier. Gabe Cormier pounding up for about five, maybe six tough yards off the slant. And I think you can see, you know, as the game progresses, Dr. I think you're going to see AB and number 44, really Matt wearing Bunyan. down the Westford defense. Play is good for five yards. It'll be second and five. We're just early in the second quarter, but as we get through the second and third quarter, I think you're going to see that happening more and more and, and have that defense softened up. Second and four. Back to pass, Matt Cotter. Got Hogart a step. Yeah, that was good coverage by number 11, Fiorello. Pass for number 44, Jack Hogart. Pass is incomplete. Third down. But I, I was wondering when they were going to take a shot. And now it's about third and five. A lot of confidence in their running game, Tim. 
Let's see if they convert right here. I agree with your comment about getting uh, worn down, though. They certainly, Westford has shown that in the first two games this season. Caldwell changes. Here's a blitz. Cotter throws the ball deep, and it, a little push there by Fiorello, but really overthrown by Cotter. Cotter's pass showing for number 44, good Hogarth. arm strength there, but. Well, pass is incomplete. Well, obviously, they saw something there because that is so uncharacteristic of Coach Maver to go to that same kind of passing play two times in a row. I don't think I've seen that. I can't remember the last time I saw the, the, the same route. And it's fourth down. You can see. And Carter just got this pass off. He, he stepped up there out of the blitz there. All right, Connor Cates coming in to punt from his 40-yard line. And they're, look, they're looking to block this punt. They're deep. coming. They're coming. And JT Kelly with the fake, and he's going to get a first down. Oh, a classic God. Coach Maver call. Did I say Connor Cates? Fake punt is taken by number 29, JT Kelly. Play is good for an active box for a first down. And I think Westford was paying about as much attention to that play as I was. Wow. That's a second second successful fake punt we've had in two games now. Had one against Natick last week. Coach Babers called a lot of great fake punts over the years, I'll tell you that. All right, this time. That's Redmond. Redmond, AJ, for no gain. Hand off to number 20, Redmond. He looked good warming up, Mark. I, he looked very, very crisp. Well, See Tim, if you told me that, that Coach Maver was going to call two long passes the same route and then have JT Kelly take, no take uh, on the, play the snap on the down. punt and fake punt with 10 yards to go with about six yards to go, that is uh, aggressive play calling. Second and 10. Ooh. I agree. I like it. Got Harry Tripp just checking in. Hogard split left. A buck play again. Gabe Cormier. Where did he go? Ended up all Cormier. the way at the 45. This buck play has been one. successful. Picks his way. That last cut as he gets low and good solid run there. Bring up third and about three. Yeah, six uh, on the play. It'll be third and third four. and four. I formation with Redmond. Goes off tackle. Oh, and good stop. Good second good effort stop. and it's not there. He gets up to about the 40, maybe a half a yard. 45 yard line and it's fourth down again. And down to number 20, Redmond. Be a very interesting play call now for AB with fourth and three from Tackle the 45. Made by number 66, AJ Balasubramian. They're going for it. Redmond goes out. Made. Okay, I think they're going to call time out here. They're going to. Oh, we got a flag. 12 men in a huddle. Either too many men on the field or delay a game. Well, let's see if that makes that decision. If that's a decision changer here. Now it's fourth and fourth and eight. Penalty is a false start against Acton Boxborough. False start. False start. I didn't see any false start. Five yard penalty. Came out of the huddle and went off. Fourth down. Quick kick. Quick kick. And it's just high. Uh, and again, a Westford bounce. It goes to about the 29. First down for the Great Ghost. Punt is down by number 44, Jack Hogarth. Go in the first half. OK, this game, so far, Tim, this game really doesn't have any real rhythm to it. You just don't get the sense that, uh, that AB is really got their thing going yet. Uh, Westford has been able to stifle them on a couple of occasions. 
I don't, I know, agree. If, don't know if it's a hangover from the Natick game or if it's uh, Saturday night or they're taking Westford too lightly, but it's 6 2 and Westford has the ball. Throw a deep post. And it's complete all the way down to the 25 yard line. Oh man, that is a. Let's take a look at that replay. That's going at number 89. Look at the throw. And you can't a throw. It's a 35 yard throw. You, you can't throw the ball any better. That goes to Daniel Cornelius. You can't throw the ball any better than that. I was going to say, Mark, we had everybody up on the line. All one-on-one -on -one coverage across the line, which is very unusual for AP to play that coverage. And they had the right play against us. Deegan Hart back to throw again. And it is incomplete. Intended for Fiorello. Well, they, they, love the, they love this sophomore quarterback. I mean, in this first game, he was, he was 9 for 30. Uh, he got sacked three times last week. But they just, they love him because uh, they moved Antonelli, who was their starting quarterback as a junior last year to tight end to, uh, to make way for, uh, for Degenhart. Little play action pass, and it was incomplete or batted down. Degenhart's wow, pass was, is batted down by number 32, Gabe Cormier. Cormier that was a was really good play fake, though. I really thought third down. I thought Cassidy had the ball there, and it's timeout Westford. Third and ten. Boy, that this pass kid's got an arm. That pass was just, but it's more than it's more than arm strength. We saw we saw arm strength with with Nick Olson last week, and and we saw arm strength with uh, with the Cambridge quarterback who had a gun, but you know he overthrew his receivers by ten yards to have this kind of arm strength and to put the ball in the air and to just put it right on the hands of your receiver. That was, that was a beautiful pass. You see Cormier bat that pass down. All right, third and 10. Okay, who's coming here? Let's take a look, who's coming? Here we go. What's at the middle, they pick got, it up pretty good. He steps up and it is oh, oh, almost, almost intercepted. Is that JT Kelly with the tip? Yeah, Tristan JT Lee. Kelly with the tip. Here you go, Mark. JT Welcome Kelly was JT Kelly. He was right there. Had the tip, the little tip play. Just just out of the hands there. Just, again, though, and Degenhart fourth down. stepping up in the pocket like an NFL quarterback. And they picked up the blitz very well, the old line there. All right, trips left. This is it. This is fourth down. They gotta convert. We got another timeout here. Timeout Westford. Westford Academy calls timeout. It's going to be about their fourth timeout, Tim. The, uh, I don't think Westford has been in that formation all game, Mark, so it would be interesting to see what they run out of that. They're going to look through our scouting report just to see what they uh, well, have they, in they, store. They, they run a lot of crisscross patterns, they run a lot of slants. They'll, run, they'll, they'll, they'll bunch their receivers up. Yeah, it looks like they run a little bit of a flood off of that formation too to the far side of the field. And this kid can throw that, you know, he can throw that that sideline pass. Yeah, you watch him uh, just in warm-ups. You can yeah. see that out, that out, that sideline out. That's the toughest throw, really, to, to make for a high school quarterback, for sure. Well, they judge NFL quarterbacks on uh, really on the ability to make that throw because that's the throw that you really need to make to be a top quarterback. And they go again with that trip formation. And we have the uh, safety on the other side of the field, so that's all one on one on let, that side. Let, let's see if we blitz here, if we have another defender. Dugenhart looking left, and he's got somebody oh. in the flat. Wide open. Just overthrew number 23, Tristan Lee. Dugenhart's pass intended for number 23, Tristan. And Tristan Kyle Lee. Tobin is very slow to get up here. Passes he's on his knees. Acton a Boxborough takes over on downs. AB taking over on downs here. Takes over on downs on the 25. Okay, Kyle getting up and walking off. And he walks off right <laughs> into just, the defensive. There he goes. He's running off now. He looks okay. All right. 
Acton Boxborough with 6.51 to go. Let's see if we can get her some rhythm here. We really haven't had a real sustained drive that, that looks real good. We've had one score, but that's about it. All right, Cotter with a nice crisp pass to uh, Dylan Caldwell yeah, for like, about four. Pass is complete to number Tim, seven, I'd, Dylan I'd like to Caldwell. see more of that quick passing game because that flat always seems Tackle to be open. Tackle made by number 20, Eric Jacobson. And you make five, six yards uh, at the very minimum. And Play if you can break a tackle, yards, be second and six. get a first down. That's a, it's a nice, nice little play to run. Hogert splits out. Cotter back to pass again. And it's intended for Caldwell incomplete. Just okay. turned him around there. Cotter's yeah. pass intended for number seven, Caldwell. Yeah, that was essentially the, the same pass on the other side. Third very down. close. Third down now. What we're seeing here, Mark, is what we said. You know, Westford's putting nine in a box to have two deep safe, uh, two actually not even deep. No, no, no. They're, they're linebackers. And uh, they're saying, hey, throw the ball. Right. They've got nine in the box, and basically your safeties are playing linebacker. Right. We fake the. No, we actually get the zip, and it's. Well covered, Caldwell with the run off the zip for about three or four yards. Okay, Westford's playing it tough. Tackle A.B.'s got a punt. Four, Matt Bunyan. Max. Bunyan has been all over the field. Gain of two in the play, it'll be fourth and four. Fiorello back on his own 40-yard line. And now it's not J.T. Kelly. I can see those numbers. That's Connor Cates. No, it's not. <laughs> it is. Good kick. Fiorello catches it on a 35. And Great it stop up by midfield. Dylan Caldwell and Kyle Tobin. Coming right back. Kyle, coming right back to make a great stop Let's on that. But well, that's great Nick field Fiorello. position for Westford. Tackle by number seven, Dylan Caldwell. It's been a defensive struggle, you know, just a, on First both sides 10, of the ball. Westford it's been about defense tonight so far, Mark. Really no momentum at all. Beaconhart now in a pistol most likely a run play and a little counter and off to number 31 Cassidy yeah, Cassidy with a counter for about five yards again good good yardage tackle made by number 33 Kyle Tobin yeah Tim the, the scouting report says that when Quarterback Play is, is good for four yards. parallel to the running back. Three, second and six. You're going to be looking at a pass. If they're up a bit, it's a run. And off to yards. 31, Cassidy. Cassidy with about another three or, or so. Bring up. Tackle made by number 44, Jack Hogard. You know, Cassidy is, is, is just, he's just your bread and butter runner. He's not, you know, he's, he's, three the play. he's, a, third he's, a, three. he's a capable runner, but he's, he's not going to burn you. Third and three. Two down territory here for the Great Ghost. And they pick a run place. He cuts up the seam oh, at the first nice down run. run. And off to number 31, Cassidy. And that was a nice adjustment by Cassidy because he's. Tackle man number 44, you can, Jack you can see he had something right up the middle Plays there. For a and Western he made Academy that adjustment. He stopped on a dime and went straight ahead, and he knew where the first down marker was. You saw the, uh, the left guard pull and trap. Back to pass. Deegan Hardy's under pressure. He steps up and lets the missile down the sideline. Touchdown. Great ghost. This and that is surreal. Tristan Lee. Tristan Lee, number 23, hauls it in, and the Great Ghost take the lead 
with 4.15, and once again, you can see another perfectly thrown pass right into the waiting arms, right in stride, in full stride, and Westbury is up 8-6. to six. Second Hart's pass is complete to number 23, Tristan Lee. We got a Last game here, for Tim. Westford Academy touchdown. This is, after all, an AB Westford game over the last five years. I know you made that point, but it really, it's been a different, a different rivalry over the last five years or so. Jacobson will attempt the point after. Jacobson with the point after, and it is good. So with 4:15 to go in the first half, the Ghost point after strike attempt again. is good. And it's 9-6 Westford. Well, that, that score looks like a field goal battle there, doesn't it? But, you know, I think what's happening here is AB is playing very aggressively on defense in terms of how they're rotating their safeties. Very different uh, defensive approach than last week against Nate. And what you're seeing here, as we, you know, as I mentioned, as we kicked off the broadcast, that you got a young quarterback. He's growing in front of our eyes and developing in that's front of his eyes. That's exactly right. And you just don't know what you're going to get. I mean, he, this could be a breakout game for this kid, so you got to respect him, Mark. You really do. Looks like a breakout game and, in the first and, and we're really coming in with a different defensive game plan because we were, we were playing nickel and dime defense uh, to, to defend guys like Dunlap last week, and we should be watching this quarterback because he can... He can thread the needle. Very, uh, all right, we got a lot of time left in the first half here. Let's see what happens here. JT Kelly, Dylan Caldwell, and J Nick McCarthy and the ball's kicked and looks like JT Kelly will take it in his own 18 yard lines. He cuts up. A little bit of speed across the 30 to the 35. All right, that's a good run Jacobson's back. Jacobson's kick is taken by Good acceleration by JT, giving AB good field position. And let's, play, let's play some football. Yeah, I agree, uh, Mark. I think it'll be first and 10 Acton Boxborough from their 35. I can hear the coaches say, Davey, let's get physical. <laughs> you know? And take it to uh, these guys here. Once again, everybody up in the box. Shotgun. And Dylan Caldwell on the zip. He gets it outside. Number seven, Dylan he Caldwell. says a cut up. Right, right play call. There. I mean, right decision, I should say, by Dylan. Yeah, and that by really, really good, good defensive play by Fiorello, who really defended the edge there. Your best Gain play, three and a play. It'll be in second perfect and seven. position, as you said, Mark, so you have to basically run over him and get as much as you can on that play. The result is a, you know, a two and a half, almost three yard gain. Shotgun again. It's time to fake zip, and it's Matt Carter up the middle, or it's JT Kelly in the, in the Wildcat as he does a double move all the way up to the 25 yard line. JT Kelly. He can run. He can throw. <laughs> He's the killer the keeper. Look at that. Wildcat, we should have picked Jacobson. that up. I was asleep. Oh, uh, yeah. That's the heck. You know. First down. But JT Kelly is the secret weapon who is no secret. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're running Wildcat again. And when we talk about a game changer, he is a game changer. Look at nine in the box again for the Ghost. Yes, run a zip, it. and it's a that's counter it. with Gabe Cormier as he cuts up the slot. And wow, that's not a fullback. I don't know what that is. That's a quick, quick kid who can do. Tim, what, what you're seeing right now, what you're seeing right now is the combined wisdom of the AB coaches adjusting to the Westford defense on the fly. You could just, you could just see the, all that brain that power working right now. Three. This is fun to watch. This Wildcat. And the give is to JT Kelly up the middle. Oh, he almost broke it. Almost broke Kelly it. Wow. He it. got the first down, but he almost broke it. Tackle maybe number 21. It's like Diamond. Boston College's offense with Tyler Murphy. 
play is good for an acting box throw. First Watch down. JT Kelly explode right past the linebacker. Who is that guy from Miami that started the Wildcat? I forget his name, but. That was a shocker. The oh, yeah. Just didn't yeah like his, that, that game. first game that he played Wildcat, nobody could figure out what he was doing. And it's a keeper again with JT Kelly. He's going to oh! go all the way up across Kelly the five to the four yard line. Tackle made by number 11, Nick we haven't Wow. I'll tell you, that's two times that, that he was almost in the end zone. Take a look Here's at this. JT Kelly makes the zip and then keeps it off tackle this time. You see a nice block. Gain of seven on the play. At the It'll point be of attack. Three. Coming inside that block. Didn't pick up who that was. This is fun to watch. Okay, back to their offense. Second Matt and Carter. Three. Matt Carter taking the snap from center. See AB adjusting this time. JT Kelly follows his blockers and well covered by the Gray Ghost. Hand off to Kelly. They try to 36 power there and. Tackle uh, made by number seven, John Scammon. Okay, A.B. can actually get a first down around the one-yard line. J.T. Kelly just following his block. No gain in the play. It'll be third down. Good pursuit. No gain to play. Third and three. And it's a counter. Nothing doing. Nothing doing. They smoked it out. And it's fourth down. Hand off to number seven, Dylan Caldwell. And I don't think, are they going to be kicking a field goal to tie the, the, the game well, here? Or? A little slow to develop this play, and what that's an interesting Fourth call down. there, Mark. Fourth down, 34 seconds and counting in the first half, 9-6. to six. Okay, they're looking to, to work that. I think JT is telling the ref to work the play clock down to one second and then call a timeout, and then I think they're going to, then they're going to kick the ball, I think. We're down to 12, 11, 10. Yeah, that's what I think they're doing. Nine seconds, A-B timeout. And they wouldn't do that unless they were going to kick the field goal, Tim. You got your act together tonight there, Mark. That's a great call. Well, I just woke up about 10 minutes ago <laughs> like, like, the, like, like uh, A-B. Connor. Duhamel has been successful on his previous field goal opportunity. What makes this interesting, if that's what we're doing here, is uh, Westford has a block tonight, as we know. So. Well, two things can happen. Either you're going to kick it or you're going to fake it. Whoa, it's go good. for it. They're... Gabe Cormier, it's a keeper, and it's, it's a in. touchdown. They got to call it. Where's the ref Where's call? the call? Where's the call? He, 11, Matt Cotter on the keeper. He hit the pylon. Because time has expired. I didn't see the ref call a touchdown. I, I didn't. Play is good for an acting box for a touchdown. Okay, touchdown. all right. I, I, didn't, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't see, see the two touchdown hands call. Here's the replay. Wow, I didn't follow this play very well. I didn't see the keeper here. There it is. There's your boot. Cuts the corner, and that's oh, it. You yeah. can see a place that the ball crosses the play. Touchdown, acting box for All right, last play of the half. Number four, Brendan Duhamel will attempt the point after. The kick is up and it is good. Okay, so we go in with a lead. Point after attempt is good. So 13 to nine. That's the end of the first half with the That's score, a, Acton Boxboro. Oh, a beautiful thing, Mark. Academy Tim, that was, that was an interesting call because what you're doing is you're, you're leaving yourself it was all or nothing there. They could have called a timeout, you know, gone for it, and still had still had the opportunity to uh, to run another play. But they called the timeout and they didn't kick. Uh, and uh, Matt Cotter on that keeper just dove in for the touchdown. 
I agree, Mark. What, uh, you know, the series of plays, the Wildcat and, and you know, just that new formation and just the action in the Wildcat with the zip fake and so on. I mean, that was just, I, we haven't seen any Keeping of that. with tradition playbook. here at Western Before. Academy. Tonight yeah, we'll be recognizing and, and all the participants Tim, obviously, of the Westford Junior they, Ghost Program. They've been practicing this. I mean, this is something that they're well. not just putting Please in give a on big the fly. To all they've the been preparing for this. And JT Kelly is handling the ball very well. Uh, we do not have Statman uh, this week. Uh, we're going to make up our own stats because nobody's paying attention anyway. <laughs> but uh, we can tell you that the Westford quarterback uh, has done a very good job. I don't know exactly what his yardage is, but uh, I'm going to say that uh, let's let's say that I, I believe that uh, he. Uh, you know, I'm going to say 120 yards. 130 that's, yards. That's a, that sounds about right. He's got those two two long completions, and uh, you know, from the a, a B standpoint, uh, uh, you know, we've been running the ball. I think that J T Kelly, obviously, at this point, is probably around. I'd say about 78 yards. That would be my guess. That's nice. Uh, no round it, numbers there. No, no. He, he got a lot of yardage on that fake punt, so I'm going to give him 78 yards. I'd say Gabe Cormier has about 35, 40 yards. And, no, I think uh, 37. 37. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and a really a defensive struggle up until uh, you know these last uh, about the last five minutes of the first half. So real interesting. So that's Next our, our stat man we'll player comparison brought to you by Shutterkeep. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I just think. Uh, you know, it's it's interesting, interesting first half game. Let's put it that way. I can't wait for this to come back. What we what we can look forward to from an AB perspective, as you said in your uh, great research, is that Westford has shown that they have really worn down in the second half of the first two games they played, Mark. And uh, so that may be a conditioning factor. And uh, we're the perfect team to wear down a team. So the music's playing, and we'll be right back after the halftime festivities. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. And to follow the swimming rules. You tell me to stay away from drugs. To always buckle my seatbelt. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules. Now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. All right, Mark, here we go. Second half here. What a great game. 13 to 9. A B ahead. A bunch of great coaching moves by Coach Maver. Let's take a look at the highlights from the first half. First, JT Kelly on a 35 power run as he cuts up and just a just just JT Kelly. Normal day of business yeah, here. Yeah, just a day at the office for Absolutely. JT. Now watch, watch a Westford quarterback. This is a sophomore. And look at him throw. That's 35 yards in the air. Right in the bread basket, number 23. That is Tristan Lee on the reception. And here's the keeper by Matt Cotter, Again, just the winning for you. Winning 50 50 raffle ticket tonight. A little bootleg, it's and he gets the ball ticket. across and knocks down the pylon. And what the a great, six, great highlight. Five, seven, I want to tell you, if, eight, if Matt Carter, if Matt Carter were ticket, six, six inches five, the other seven, way, six, they eight, wouldn't have zero. a touchdown. That was a great play your by Matt. In the press box. That was. you got to love that. Gotta love that play, Mark. So uh, here we go. And, you know, again, it's late and the temperature is still holding up beautifully tonight. What a just Whoa, a what a difference night. from last week. I'll tell you, we were just freezing it was, last week. It was week. cold. And uh, we'll see what happens here as they get the second half. It was a chess match for most of the most of the uh, first half with the second um, Brenda Duhamel will kick you know, off the for last five Dodge minutes Hill. really making it all happen. So Westford will receive the ball. As it's a bullet down the left side of the field. And God, just take it the There's running. the fake, yeah. Fiorello. And he is met with everybody from Whoa, AB, or about right. four or five. So AB comes out with a nice attitude. I think they were looking for that fake. And uh, Jackson First Rolls. Contact, maybe number 45, Jackson Rolls. Trick. Take a look at number 19 on this play. Fiorello just barely catches this ball on his fingertips, Mark. Fakes the First reverse. And 10 okay, look at number 19 come flying in along with Nick Clabeau and Harry Tripp. Nice job. Okay, let's have a three and out here. 
A little difference in our defensive backfield. We're playing off the ball a little bit more, Mark. A little bit more respect for Dugan Hart. And off to number 31, Cassidy. Cassidy goes up for about four or five. Well, Cassidy is no Chad Kidd. I mean, that kid. Tackle man, number 32, Gabe Chad Cormier. Kidd was, was just unbelievable. Almost had 200 yards and a rushing five last the play. Week. It'll be second and five. Give us this time to Cassidy showing okay, his quickness Cassidy, and there's a yeah. flag on the play. Hand off to number 31, Ben Cassidy. Good job by Cassidy, but it's coming back. Tackle maven number 23. It Nick is McCarthy. coming back with a hold on Westford. Both Penalty teams against Westford coming out Academy with a Kobe. lot of attitude, Mark. You see, bring this play up and see uh, where the uh, hold was. You see it on the, I think the outside, number 55 yep. and 67 there. Pick, pick your hold there on that play. <laughs> All right, so that'll bring it back. It'll be first and 15 for the Gray Ghost. Again, you can see the way the Ten yard penalty, secondary replay, playing down. off the ball. They're, they're giving uh, the receivers about four or five yards, respecting the speed and Dugenhardt's uh, ability to connect. Back to pass, he's looking right, he looks left. Look at him, look off the safety there and he throws the ball over the middle, nobody there. But nice look off there, this kid's yeah, got something. Yeah, nice look off and I was also, he looked, yeah, he just, just, for five. just watch, watch him as he prepares is incomplete. to get the It'll ball at down. the line of scrimmage. I mean, he looks like a quarterback. He is, a, he is in control there. He is moving. Last call on the 50-50 draw. Ruben Fiorello ticket, there to the left. 657 680. Red ticket 657 680. In five minutes, we'll pick another number. Maybe shown blitz, but Gabe backs off as they shadow him. Degenhart doesn't not a lot of speed as he gets pushed out of bounds after about three or four. Degenhart pushed out of bounds Back by number 32, the, Gabe Cormier. Here's a replay here, Mark. What? Yeah, well, you can see that. Uh, that he, that he is more Drew Bledsoe than Colin Kaspernak, yes. that's for sure. Did not able to get to the corner. That that was a I think we got away with a face mask there. Yeah, I, All right, well let's down. And we got that three and out we were looking for. JT Kelly and Dylan Caldwell back deep. Take your pick. Two very dangerous returners. And either way, we're going to get great field position out of this. High snap, and they get a good kick off. Jake. Jacob, Dylan Jacobson's Caldwell. punt is taken on a fair, fair catch. catch on the 50. First well, and 10 seven, Dylan Caldwell. Well, if you told me that we would get the ball on our First side of the field, I, I would tell you there'd be no way that could happen. That was a great punt and a fair catch by Caldwell, and we've got it on our 49. And let's see how we're going to line up here. No wildcat right now. Nope. Double wing. We line up the way we started the, the way game. Just the way we started. Just the way we started the first play of the game. Caldwell again cuts up the seam and this time gets and about six yards. I think that's what okay, they wanted the take, first play of the game. Take a look at that uh, Jack Foster block on this replay. Jack Foster number three, Jacob made that Bolinko. play possible. Number, number 55, seven, watch Scammon. him with that kick out block. Boom. Right there. Good job. And five and a play he and took, he five. took Jacobson completely out of the play. Second and five across midfield. The Colonials go to the 45. Blitz, and up the middle we go is and Cormier for three Cormier. yards. Trying to run by that blitz, that run blitz again, Mark, and uh, almost got through almost it. It's a third it. and short, about third and two. Tackle man number 63, Michael Burns. Gain of two in a play, it'll be third and three. 
Well, they're definitely missing AJ, their captain, number 65. Delaware, but JT Kelsey cuts up the seam. He gets in space. He's in the open. The Turn on the Jets. 10 Good 5. Bye. Touchdown, Colonial. Goodbye. Goodbye. Once you get JT out in the open, there's nobody's going to catch him. Nobody. Wow, what a block at the point of attack there. Who was that? It was a pulling oh, guard that was there. Beautiful. Let's see demolished. The, see that one again if we can. And once we said, once you crack that initial seam on that nine in the box and you get out to the secondary, then it's a foot race. Okay. Oh, that was beautiful. Here's a Here replay. Let's take a look at that. Still can't, still can't that was see. Past who, the block there. Yeah. Right? yeah. Woo. JT Kelly, another great game. One after another. Okay, the chances of this happening, chances after. of this happening again are very small, right? <laughs> All right, the kick is up and uh, it is much better. Good with 8.09 to go in the third quarter. The Colonials go up 20 to 9. That looks a lot better, Mark. Let's take a look at that run one more time, see if we can catch that block. All right, here we go. All right, Dana Just Weaver. Pulling guard, Dana 60. Weaver. Oh, what Just a pancake, pancake there! That pancake. is beautiful. And I think Kevin Kai, the other block, but Dana Weaver had that first pancake block that just got him to get out of that seam and into open space. And let's see if this uh, pattern holds true about the second half for Westford. 20 to nine, we've got a little space here. Well, this makes it more interesting because you're going to see some more deep throws by our number 10. Uh, D well, you know, we're going to have, we'll we're, we're we're gonna have to deal with this kid for two more years, Tim. Number two, Tom and Jacobson. He, and he's just going to get better and better. Nick is back for Westford Academy. And he's already got good size for a quarterback. The Hamill ready for the kick. And it's to Fiorello at the 10. Kick Got some blockers. He's looking for a seam, and oh, we close fast. Okay, nice play there. Boy, you really That's, need to that is uh, Nick, McCarthy. Nick McCarthy. McCarthy, right on that play, keeping his lane. That seam was open for a minute there. I just broke a sweat, and then McCarthy closed the gap. It'll be first and ten, Westford from there, 33. Yeah, you may we see you may see an aerial show here. They were. It's a pink ticket. They like they like to put it up. Check your tickets if you have a pink ticket. It's number one four two one three one. Tristan to the near ticket, side of the field goes two, into the backfield one, one. and he gets the ball. The wide side of the field showing Head his up speed. Head twenty three, Tristan Lee. And it's a first down. This kid is fast. Yeah, he's good. He's good. He had. He had a good three steps on his defender on that touchdown reception. Top of number 29, JT Kelly. Flag Taking on the back. Flag got, on the play. A, I think another hold here. Holding on Westford. And they're doing Bill themselves no favors here, Academy. Tim. Both, both series holding calls. Be a 10 and that'll yard penalty. Re repeat first down. But Tim, you hold for a reason. You hold because you have to hold. And that's where the AB defensive line is beginning to take control here. Again, winning 50-50 raffle ticket is pink, one, four, two, one, three, one. Pink, one, four, two, one, call. three, one. Call Come it. to the press box to claim your prize. Oh. And the ball intended for Tristan. Tristan wasn't even Passes on the scouting report as a top <laughs> player to stop. No, no, they're going to him. Pass huh? is incomplete. Kid's got Second some wheels. Down. But you can see there's there are some timing issues between the little the little Tom Brady and his receivers uh, action here. A little timing issues going on here. Hard looks to, oh. looks to keep it, 
And he's going to get hit big time. Oh, and it's a helmet good to the hit head. by Jack There's a Hogan. flag there, I would think. Let's There's see. No flag, no he, flag. He That's lowered just a his good head hit. at the time of. That's just a good hit. Second hard brought down by number 44, Jack Hogan. Take a Take a look at Jack on this play. I think it, the reason if it were a little it higher, it was low. It was low. It was not high. Oh, well, maybe it was. <laughs> we're good. We're, we may be getting away with a, a couple, couple of calls here. Third down. Fiorello is changing sides here, and we we have a linebacker out. There's a little miscommunication here. This might be a. Uh, oh, there's another flag, and oh, a sack. And a, and a okay, hard we've got Bowden. Griff Bowden. Kyle Tobin. And Nick LeBeau. All in this. Let's check the flag here. Degenhard brought down by number 58. Okay, Griffin false start. They're going to decline that penalty. And Westford is just self-destructing here in the second half. Just almost like right on cue, Tim. Well, we changed our defensive scheme in, in, the way it looks to me, uh, Mark, too. We're playing off the ball, letting our players you know attack the zone which they're most comfortable with of course last week it was incredible the performance but okay last snap was high let's see if there's a good snap here Tom Jackson with a, another high snap but he does get the ball up quickly and home oh, <laughs> Dylan Caldwell <laughs> takes that ball and ducks discretion being, being the better part of valor Caldwell that was good self-protection on oh. the part of Dylan Caldwell. He probably saved us about five or ten yards by uh, picking the ball up at the 45-yard line. So once again, we start First with good field position, and uh, we're beginning to get that rhythm, beginning to get on a roll here. 6.41 to go in the third quarter. What a great, just a great view from up here. We're broadcasting from the top of the... Yeah, we're, as, as they say, Tim, we're high above courtside. Yeah, we are. We just don't. We don't have. We don't have waiter service here, though. There's. And. All right. Let's coach see what Gagne they're talking is, about uh, here. Westford coach is looking for some clarification here. About the hit and the. Uh, I, he might have been. He might be talking about Hogard's hit on uh, on Degenhardt. Okay, Coach Maver out to talk. He's gonna, he's gonna get a translation of what happened on the other side. I don't think it's gonna change anything. It's first and ten for AB on the 45 with 6:41 to go in the third quarter. It's a big crowd tonight. This this looks like a Thanksgiving Day. It game. does. It That's looks. Really. I was just thinking that. I was just thinking that this looks like Thanksgiving Day crowd. All right, here we go after a long pause there. Counter with Gabe Cormier. As he and off to number 32, Cormier. Leans forward for about three. The great thing about Gabe is that it's Dr. always, number 21, always positive seven. yardage. Like when you talk about him going low at the end of every play, Plays he always gets yards. that extra yard or two by doing second that. Second and eight. Second and eight. Maybe a long seven. Looks like we're in an overload left. And we do a power to the overload. And JT Kelly is well covered. They're really keen on him. Look look for JT to be the uh, decoy as we. Yeah, JT may play the part of Brian Dunlap Field for the, the rest of this game. 63, Michael Burns. Because they're, they're saying they're just not going to let number 29 beat us. Lost the yard to play. It'll be third and nine. Third down, nine yards to go. Crowder back to pass, and it's complete to Dylan Caldwell oh, on a nice beautiful out. Wow. Beautiful Carter's throw. Beautiful throw by Matt. Seven. Caldwell. Beautiful like throw. A, Perfectly tied. Looks like a flood to the right one. there, Brent, Brent Mark. That is a flood. Play is good for an active box, bro. First down. Three receivers for AB. 
low, medium, and high, and they throw it to the intermediate, Dil Dylan Caldwell, intermediate receiver. Matt Cotter doing it with his arms and his feet tonight. And it's Gabe Cormier. And that's number 32, <laughs> Cormier. But he, sti he still gets that extra yard. He does. He's he galloping. He got stood up by six guys, and he still gets that extra yard. Watch, watch look at this. Watch look at the this. galloping motion 66. here. He, look at him. Oh, here he so goes. Look at, and look at that jabbing. extra yard. There, there you go. There you go. He could teach Ridley a thing or two about how you hold that ball. No gain in a play. It'll be second and ten. Looks like second a professional wrestler. <laughs> All right, this is a big down here. You want to keep the uh, the playbook all in order here. Get Kyle Tobin in as a lead blocker. Oh, what a oh. Hit. Just some and physical to football. 32, Cormier. Gabe Cormier. Okay, let's take a look at that. Gabe just says, "Take that, take that. You're not stopping me." And watch, look at the watch. lead block. Hello to the middle linebacker. Tobin. Oh, oh. Man, number 59, so oh, oh. Beast. oh, that hurts. That hurts. It's, this is a physical game. Gain of four game. in the play. It'll be third and six. Okay, that, third and Bunyan, six. Uh... Last call in the second 50-50 raffle ticket. Okay, definitely two, Again, it's two plays ticket. here. Four down territory. The number is one, four, two, one, three, one. Pink ticket, one, four, two, one, three, one. If you have that ticket, Potter come back to the pass press again. Box. Intended for Hogart. Oh, that flat was wide open it was. to Dylan Caldwell. That. Wide open for, number for the first Hogan. down. And they're they're Pass looking they're looking for something there with, with Hogan. Let's let's see if they go to uh, go to the flat on this one. If I know Coach Maver on that play, there's a uh, there's a quick stop and hook on that play or something like that that they're setting him up for because there's something going on a chess match. All right, fourth down. There's a counter. Nope, Cotter's going to look downfield and throw back side. Oh. And he got nailed on that. Cotter's pass intended for Hogart. By number 21, Nicholas Passes Diamond. Incomplete. Westford Academy takes over on downs. OK, Westford ball. Well, Cotter took a lot of punishment on that pass. Game of adjustments here, Mark. Westford now adjusting. Here's the replay. Watch Cotter. He's, he's going to get hit pretty good. Look at the action on the line. Look at him faking the run, pulling. Yeah. We got Bowden pulling on the they, play. They faked the 40. Uh, and the 44. he really got nailed on that play. Here we go. We're back to live action. Deegan Hart with the handoff. Nothing to yeah, it. Nothing to it. Cassidy. Okay. They're keying a little bit on Cassidy right now. Tackle maybe number 32, Cormier. They're running that West Virginia type. Gain of a yard in the play. It'll be second and nine. Offense. He does not look like a sophomore. Directing this offense right now. Give us a Cassidy again, and it's stopped after maybe a yard. Much stouter Cassidy. defense in this second half by AB. Tackle made by number 50, Kevin Kai. Okay, Kevin Kai on the stop, and okay. it's about, gonna be about third and a long seven. No gain on the play, it'll be third and nine. That is a long seven, third and nine. Okay. It's like third it's, a, it's <laughs> third and seven. All right, there's a blitz at the oh, middle. Oh, there's, there's a, a, there's a. Looked uh, like a hold on that play, and but they Higginhart got him. Was under they duress. got him, and it was Jack Hogart who really made that play. He didn't get credit for the sack. That was Pete Raskoskis who got credit for the sack. But look at this, and look at Hogart. Look at Hogart. Hold Pete him up Rikoskis. here and make it possible for It'll Pete down. to come in and get him. Digging Hart, you know, just didn't have time to set up. He really is a pocket passer. Yeah, he's Martin. definitely a pocket. He is a Drew Bledsoe. JT back deep. Gonna 
get the kick off. A little bit of pressure. I was wondering if JT was going to take a step back. Gets the ball across the 30. And look at oh, the second effort. What Whoa. is he doing? He's, look at the second oh my and third God. and fourth effort. That's one of the best. Oh, Curry. that is a, that's the highlight JT reel for the, uh, for the season. Oh, let's take a look at that Matt one. Bunyan. Every flag on the play. Oh, there's a flag on the play. Oh, this comes back. Oh, what a shame. Look at this. Look what JT does on this. He picks it up. He eludes the first guy. Then he goes to the edge. Looks like he's going to be tackled. He stops. He gets rid of three guys. He pirouettes off a fourth. He breaks two tackles. And then someone's grabbing his shirt for about 10 yards. It's, it's against Westford. All right. We got 15 tacked onto that. Penalty and that an great return. Below the waist against Westford I think that Academy. demonstrates more than anything, first, how strong JT is. And secondly, his mindset. No wonder he is such a great back because he's just determined to keep moving downfield and that's you know. and you know and the bad news for the RPI football team is that he's going to be playing lacrosse wow all right they fake the counter Matt Cotter throws the ball downfield it's complete what a great throw on the run I can't see who that is. Is that JT or no? Nope. Oh, that's Harry Tripp. Number 45. Wow, Harry that's Tripp. Harry Tripp, and ha Very nice. Harry has really bulked himself up. Pushed out of bounds by number 11, Nick Fiorillo. Coach Gallant says, "Play is good of all, box all the players down. in terms of improvement and really working hard. Harry Tripp is right, right at, right at the top of the list." You can see now. Uh, let's see if Westford's still putting nine in a the box. They are, and they run right up the middle. Gabe Cormier, and second and third Cormier. effort for about five or six yards. Really physical game. Yeah, but you see that Double happening right now. You see, Mike you, Burns. you see that softening up, and they're wearing down, and and now they're just uh, they're they're really having their way with the D line. Second, second and goal. Second and goal on the four. Pitch out to number 32, Cormier. Cormier no with a game. little jump no game cut on the there. Play. They went with that tight slot left there, Mark, that they use so often when they see eight or nine in a box. Drag we were talking about that with Coach Salon the other night. I also was talking about that uh, Third and goal. That same formation with H Hank Morris. And uh, I love when AB executes on that, that tight split. Let's see if they use that again. Third and goal on the fourth. See if they go right up the gut here. Nope. Cotter rolls out. He's got a corner play. It's a jump ball. Jump ball. I think Westford might have. They're not calling it a reception. The ball. I think it's out of it might be. No, it's a Westford interception right at the end of the end Let's zone right that. there. Let's take a look at that. Cotter's pass is intercepted by number one, Brett Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald had excellent position on that play. Right in front. Result of play will be a touchback. Whoa, look at that. 10 Westford from their 20. Great defensive wow. play, and he just got that one foot in at the end of the end line, and it's Westford ball on the 20-yard line. That's the end of the third quarter. It. 20 to 9, A.B., and, uh, you know, as we said last time, Mark, you know, you, you, just, gave, uh, you just gave Westford a free pass right there. So we'll have to, you know, just gather up here. I think from a standpoint of execution and a line of scrimmage, we look great. So I want to thank our sponsors and ask everyone to mention that they uh, saw them on the broadcast. If you get the opportunity, stop into one of our sponsors' place of business and say hi. Acton Pharmacy, Gallant Insurance, the Steinberg Lally Charitable Foundation, Harsip and Stewart Family Law, Shire, Caton and Epstein, Post Road Carpet One, T.C. Landos and Argento Electric. Thank you so much. Thank you to all our sponsors. Now we start the fourth quarter, 20 to nine. Still a game here. There's a blitz. Well Nick covered. Cabo. He steps up in the middle where he's dangerous. Oh, Matt Cotter. 
roving over the middle, and there is a flag. We got flag. a call here. We got to. We either have a defensive hold or pass interference here. Penalty on the play. I think it's going to be pass interference. That ball was in the air. It is. Uh, looks okay. like pass interference, and we haven't seen the call yet. Check on the call here. Yeah, he's, he's going to say pass interference, A.B. Penalty is pass interference against Acton Boxborough. That puts the ball at the 35-yard line. A.B. playing three deep. Like a, really a prevent. This time they run against that with and Cassidy. And number 31, Cassidy. Okay, Westford feeling like they have a new lease on life. We have an 11-point game. That's a touchdown, a touchdown, a two-point conversion, and a field goal. Gain of five in the play. It'll be second and five. Cassidy again, this time well covered. Probably the best run defense we've seen all night, that particular play. And off to number 31, Cassidy. Okay, we got an injured... Injured player on the field here. I don't know who that is, but he is he is down right now. Tackle made by number 50, Kevin Kai. Is that Kevin Kai? Gain to be hard to play. It'll be I, third and four. I think it's Kevin Kai who's down right now. Kevin Kai has been just sticking his nose into every play here. No, no, it, no, it's not Kevin. All right, That's Kyle Tobin. Kyle Tobin. Once again, he's had a tough night, Tim. But he's walking off. And it looks like he'll be back. All right, a very important third down play coming up here. Third and a long four, about third and five almost. Look at how soft A.B. is playing against this pass. Offense here. Again, we give it to Cassidy up the middle. And he gets oh, the third nice down. Cassidy. Nice push by Cassidy. Nice push by the offensive line, and they move the chains. Tackle made by number 58, Griffin Bowden. Okay, Play Cassidy good for Academy, following his down. blockers. Good block into point okay, of attack. Back, back live on the hurry up here. They don't waste any time getting the next play in. This time it's that's Fitzgerald. That's one, Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald with a burst up the seam here for about eight or nine yards. We really haven't, seen, made by number haven't seen Fitzgerald much at all. He played a lot of running back against Chelsea. Play is good for eight yards. It'll be second and two. Lugenhard in a pistol now. Cassidy again with it. Another first down, another and great to push. 31, Cassidy. Clearly. Now it looks like these teams have uh, traded uniforms here. You can see out of the pistol, lead block. Taco made by number 23, and Nick McCarthy. Play is led up the hole. Westford Academy, first down. First down. Okay, AB's going to talk it over here. Still got nine minutes and ten seconds left in this game. Lots of time left in this game. As we said, we've got a quick turnaround. We're playing Newton South Thursday night. So that's the kind, same kind of turnaround you that they used to have when you played a Thanksgiving game and then went to the playoffs the next Tuesday. You only have five games, uh, five days between games.
Okay, ball on the 39 yard line. First down for Westford. Where Bunyan goes, the ball goes, I say. It is right behind Bunyan again. And off to number 31, Ben Cassidy. Cassidy for about two or three this time. Okay, we got Fiorello. Number, 78 Fiorello, number 11 coming in. We got Lee, 23, Plays split the two out yards. left. It'll be second and eight. You're looking at a pass here. That shows you how much pass. I know. I mean, a, a run with a pulling and tackle there. And number 31, Cassidy. All right, third and about three and a half. 8.27 to go in the ball game. Eleven point lead for the Colonials. Bunyan back into yeah, the game the here. Third and five. Let's watch where he goes. They've been using him as a lead blocker. Look Again, at that. Right behind that's Bunyan. Right. Yeah, that's what he's doing. Yeah, he's almost, almost like an H back, Tim. Fourth and back one. Made by number 48. Liam Murray. And you gotta and you gotta, be fourth and one. You gotta believe they're probably gonna run right behind Bunyan one more time to try to get this first down. There they go. Whoa, I'm not sure. I don't think they got it. I don't think they got it. I, I think it's A B ball. Cassidy. Oh, A B. Very stout defense here. Here's the replay here, Mark. Watch this. This is look at look at Bunyan. Look at Bunyan with that lead block, but they shake that Play block. The first down. Active box bro takes over on downs. Great, that is great D by A B. Griffin Bowden there with the tackle. Looks like we are slanting in the hole to get a little bit more sideways action. Gotta get a little that. better angle. All right, first and ten. Colonials. Everybody's up. Everybody's up. They got ten in the box here. JT Kelly. Hand off to number twenty-nine. Caught Kelly. In the backfield. This is a They're not going to let AB play Michael ball control and try to run out, Sabrina. run the clock out here. They're, they're going to force us to put it in Lost the air. The to play. It'll be second and Dylan We got yeah, Dylan's down. down. He's really hot. He's hobbling right now. He's got a looks like a left ankle. Mark, I think you got to go he's back. Gonna, he's going to be okay. It looks. You got to go back to the Wildcat, or you have uh, Matt Cotter basically doing some bootlegs. Either way, the quarterback's got to be involved in the game as the 12th player. Right Absolutely, now. yes. If you're going to key on him anyhow. Why not just hike the ball to and get another blocker at the point of attack? T. Kelly on the outside, he gets up the seam. He's got a first down and more. That's a great call by Coach and, Mabry. Oh, wow, perfect they call. Had, they had 11 in the box. And look at, look at, the, look at the play, play fake by Matt Cotter. You can't really see it, but that was a great play, play, play fake by Matt Cotter. First down. Made it look like he was going back to pass, and J.T. Kelly was already five yards past the line of scrimmage. Six. Ball in the 45, first and 10, new set of down, 6.49 to go. Up the middle goes Gabe Cormier for a couple. And off to number 32, Cormier. Okay, now with an 11 point lead, time becomes really crucial. Tackle made by number 59. Wind down Visa. to about six minutes to go in the game. Gain of three in the play, it'll be second and seven. Second and seven. There's that that tight slot. 
We run to it. And there's a hop and a skip. And there's JT Kelly weaving and bobbing, and he's still going. And it's the gift that keeps on giving across the 25 to the 24 yard line goes JT Kelly. And it's time like this that I really miss Statman. Because I, I'd Rick love to Jared. tell you, look at that run. Play is good for an active box. Every score, run down. is a, it's like a, it's a work of art. Just a, just like a piece of art to watch JT Kelly run. Mark, his reads on the tackles, they have their shoulders turned, he's cutting the other way. It's really a beautiful thing. A Here's great, that tight in, slot the other way. intuitive runner. A.J. Redmond and off tackle 20, for Redmond. maybe a yard. Second and ten. Okay, let's get a score. Put this one away here. 5-19 to go That'll in the ball be number 20, Eric Jacobson. J.T. Kelly okay, comes out. Okay, yeah. No gain on the play. It'll be second and ten. Dave Cormier. And off to number 32, Cormier. And I bring up third and 11. All right, let's see if JT Kelly is coming back in Nick the game Diamond. here. And number 44, Matt Bunyan. Loss of a yard in the play, it'll be third and 11. Okay, Kelly is in for Kyle Tobin, third and 11. Westford timeout. And Westford is going to call a timeout here. Academy. I'll tell you, one player on Westford that's really has impressed me on both sides of the ball is Bunyan. Yeah. He's a, he's a football player. 5'11", 205 pound football player. That's a high school he's football player. He's been all player. over the field, all night long. All right, double wing, third and 11. Oh, oh just. Threw it behind who was the uh, intended receiver. Connor's pass okay. intended for number 44, a Hogan. Jack Hogart. Yeah, Matt, Matt and Jack have just pass not been able complete. to connect Fourth tonight. He's, uh, he's been targeted, I think, four or five times tonight. Just haven't made that connection. Fourth down. Got to go for it. False start. Here comes the blitz. Got some movement. Yep. Yeah, Maybe Jack was. Uh, false start against Acton Boxborough. Be a five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Well, another chance to work on your deep roots. Pass has got pressure on the backside. And JT Kelly had double coverage. Connor's pass intended for number 29, Kelly. Incomplete, 427 to go in the game. Pass Westford is incomplete. takes over. If we could see Westford a replay on that, on I don't understand why number 21, Nick Diamond, did not come in. You could see him almost uh, blitzing Carter and then just, just stopping. I don't know if he thought there was going to be a screen pass, but at any rate. It's Westford ball on the 30-yard line. I think he was instructed not to let Cotter escape off that left flank there. Mark, that's my read on yep. his instruction. That's a good, good point, Tim. Here's Westford with trips. Stacked. We haven't seen this formation tonight. Oh, and good digging pursuit. Digging around hard. the keeper. Taken good down pursuit and good keeper. coverage. Those, those trips, if you look at... Kyle Tobin. Kyle Tobin on the stop, but there was good coverage on those trips. Lost the two in the play. It'll be second and 12. 
4.05 to go and counting the game. Three rush for the Colonials now. Deacon Hart rolls right this time. And he looks and it is, is it complete? Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a complete for a first down, Deacon a Hart's bullet. Deacon pass is complete to number 11. That was to Fiorello. Fiorello and that was a bullet on the run. Throwing from a strong Plans side, right at the Academy. first yard first mark down. of the Fiorello. Even, even in slow motion, you can see the ball come out of his hand. Looks like there's some movement. Timeout or a false start or Timeout. Okay. Yeah. Tim, Westford is, is still a team that is playing to win this game. They still feel that they're in the game and they're playing to win this game. No doubt. I mean, you got 343, you and, get a score, and, and yep, now and you're an onside kick away from making things interesting. And we've so. not been able to put them away with that, with that last score. Okay, Degenhardt has a fresh set of downs here at the 41 yard line. Back to pass, he's looking deep. And he's got a receiver open, and it's Tristan who had a step or two on That's Caldwell. Oh, he just got turned Tristan around Lee. a little bit on that pass. Pass is incomplete. Second down. For a kid that wasn't even on the scouting report, Tristan has been, he has been uh, <laughs> interesting. He's been a favorite target of Duggan Hart tonight, that's for sure. Incomplete intended for pass Cassidy. Pass intended for number 31, Ben Bring Cassidy. Up. Okay, now you really, you really don't have to worry Third about down. the run. You can just rear back and go after Degenhardt because they're, they're not going to waste time with three and a half minutes to go here. Degenhardt looking deep again. He's under pressure. He's going to take it across midfield for a first down and more. Well, that showed some surprising speed there that we hadn't seen before there, Tim. Digging hard on the keeper. Take a look at this. Rushes for a Westford Academy Look at him around down. the edge. And he shows you some speed here as he just puts it in and gets that first down and keeps his drive going. Ball on the 39-yard line of the Colonials. 3.20 to go in the game. Little quick hook. Pass is complete to number 11, complete Nick to Fiorello. Fiorello. Yeah, Fiorello's had a lot of touches tonight between punt Push returns and Kelly. reception, so it's uh, second down and about three. Gain of seven on the play, it'll be second and three. Second and three. Dugan back to pass. No pressure here. And it was intended for Fiorello. Intended Boy, for that's Fiorello. a long pass. That's Martin a Blake. long he pass. And, that, that, and that, was a, that was a catchable pass, too. That is, it was a little high, but uh, but Fiorello could have caught that pass. But that was your that was your 25-yard out. That's for a sophomore to be throwing that kind of ball in high school. Wow. All right, they, third and they three. They may run this for a first down. That'll stop the clock. Nope. You know, it looks back here. Oh, beautiful almost. play. Jack Mad Maddox on the deflection. Oh. By number nine, Jack Maddox. Fourth number down. nine, tipping the ball. Take down. a look at that. Jack Maddox gets right in the way. 
leaves his feet and it's fourth down now and it's, this is the game for Westford. Picanard goes back, looking right, he's under pressure, he escapes. And he's gonna get the first down. That depends on the spot. It is very, very They're close. Going to the keeper. I think he it might. It is very close. Kelly. Way too high. Let's see. I, th I think you're within a foot either way of making the first down or not. 2.28 to go in a the game. They call the change. It's the third measurement of this game. This And this is the most important measurement of the game. Official timeout for a measurement. Because this, this either puts the exclamation mark on this game or it keeps Westford alive. And we're waiting, we're looking. And it is just inches, an inch short. They can't even is tell. It, they can't tell. They can't tell. You gotta put a, you gotta put a piece of paper. You gotta put a, a piece of ball. paper. A.B. Ball. Oh, one sheet of paper. Play is short of the first down. Whoa. A.B. Takes, takes over. And can we, can we exhale now? No, <laughs> not me. I, I can't do it. <laughs> you, can, you don't do that till, till the, till the final gun, right? Absolutely. Wow. That, it, it, that's indicative of the way this game has gone, though. That, that couldn't have been any closer. A.B. with 2.28 to go. Here's a J.T. Kelly in the outside, cuts up the seam. Hand off to Kelly. And maybe gets a yard. Okay, but it's eating up time. And Tackle Westford. Tackle number 63, Mike Burns. It's a flag on the play. There's a flag in the, it looks like a flag in the secondary there. Looks like, uh, and they're talking it over. They're having a very serious discussion here. There's a lot of explanation going on here. Are we talking about a defensive hold or a, ch or a chop block or something? It's going to be something, something strange. I think it's, I think it's a 15-yard. That is a dead ball foul. Personal foul per against Zach Yeah, Foxborough. personal foul. I don't wow. know what it is, but that's 15 yards against AB. Well, that makes this interesting, Mark. 15-yard penalty. Now we're deep in our own territory at the 15-yard line with a first and second and 25. Wow. And how many timeouts does Westford have, if any? JT Kelly on the weak side of the field gets loose, and he's going to cut back, to for, back across the original line of scrimmage in another couple of yards. It'll be. That, that's about a 12, 13 yard pickup, Tim. Mike Burns. This is a great when, play call when, by Coach Mabry here. Watch yeah. this. It's just, these lined up trips right, run a quick little motion from JT Kelly's the inside back, and basically runs a 35 power off of that trip. So that's a great call. And we're looking at timeout Westford. 149 yeah, that's, to that's go. A, that's a makeable third down. We got about a third and eight now. We're down to 149 to go. And with a two-score game, Mark. Really, I mean, you wouldn't expect it. I did not expect this close a game. No. Just wondering what the strategy is here for Coach Maber. I wish I knew the, uh, the timeouts left for Westford. Let 
makes it all the more impressive because Westford lost their captain, AJ. They're really the, the rock of their line right at the beginning of the game. Here's JT Kelly again going to motion. They get the oh, beautiful Gabe Cormier play call. inside. He gets close Great to a call. first down. I think he might and have it. 32, Cormier. I think it's going to be another one of those uh, three or four inches either way measurement. Tackle made by number 21, Here's Nick Diamond. Let's watch game. Oh, Cormier. Once again, you love the way he runs. Just always going forward, always fighting for that extra yardage. And we're going to have another measurement here. Jonathan Scammon had a direct shot at Gabe Cormier, and he bounced off of him. And he looks like a good ball player. I'm sure it was a heck of an effort. First, First down. down. Okay. All right. The me the good for an Tim, the first measurement time. guard is smiling down upon us tonight. This has been a series of very close measurements all night. Now we can start to take a knee here, I believe. And I think we'll probably run one or two more plays. Westford must have another timeout, the two timeouts then. Up the middle we go. Gabe Cormier yeah, with another five. Okay, this should be, I hope, the last timeout for Westford. Tackle made by number 63, Mike Burns. All right, looking forward to Newton Game South. And that really great five. quarterback for Newton South. Uh, and he, I don't know what he did today. They only scored 14 points, but last week against Boston Latin, he threw for 450 yards. So they have a very explosive offense and they, they ran into a strong Lincoln Sudbury team. But we're gonna be hosting Newton South at AB Thursday night. Second and five. Push is showing run blitz. Gabe Cormier with another first down. Now you, yeah, number 32, now you can take your knee. And that's it. And Westford is, uh, no, Westford, as we said, they played two very, very good teams. And uh, they really, they came to play tonight. They really did. On their home field, in front of Plays their home fans. Uh, they put in a West very Academy respectable effort. They really did. I, I'm impressed. I, I think they have a lot of talent. And they uh, run this offense very well. And uh, this quarterback, Diggenhardt, is... Uh, he, he's got a heck of an arm. Yeah, and, I, and, <laughs> and he's I got some poise. He does, he does, and I think and I think they they feel good about the effort tonight. And uh, you know, their coach is only in his second year, and uh, they're really you know rebuilding this program. And I think that they've got a, a franchise quarterback to uh, rebuild it with. Their, you know, their record isn't going to look all that good this year. They're already 0-3, but, uh, but they can play. So you're heading right up to the lake, huh? This is uh, right in the middle of your weekend. You can come down from the lake, and you're going to head up to the lake tonight? Absolutely. It's just too nice a weekend Whoa, to uh, get up there. Get so. some coffee, okay? <laughs> I will do that. <laughs> Definitely get a cup of coffee on the way home. A.B. runs the game again. Look at that sidestep. And Gabe Cormier gets loose. And he jump steps and it's touchdown Colonials. And wow. And 32, Cormier. Well, you know, the scoreboard is going to. Play results in an active box bro touchdown. The scoreboard may say 27 to 9, but. Wow, what a great little. Look at that move right at the end wow. there with a quick feet. 
26 to 9 with a minute 20. And uh, we were, it was yeah, a fullback uh, run. We weren't trying to rub it yeah, in, Mark. No, 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 no. It was, you know what it reminded me of? That game against Bedford that we won 60 to nothing. And was it Jack? Something or other, uh, uh, a, a backup fullback yes. at the end of the game ran for 60 some odd yards right. to make it 60, have a 60 to, to play nothing. After. Right up the gut. That was right up, right up the middle, just like this run. And the kick is up, and it is good on this beautiful Saturday night. So this game is going to keep going for a while. We've got a kickoff and a return, and uh, and then uh, three or four passes at least. Well, I can't wait to find out uh, what J.T. Kelly's yardage is today. I mean, he is he is racking up some impressive numbers. I mean, coming off uh, 166 yards last week. Uh, he's got to be. He's got to be close to that number this week. I has to, you know. And uh, Gabe is such a terrific compliment. Well, he's he's got he's he's going to be over 100 yards too. But that run, that was 40. Yeah. <laughs> 45. So no question. Well, if people look in the paper and they'll see 27 to nine and they'll say, nah, it wasn't much of a game, <laughs> but we know better. Absolutely. Down the middle, Fiorello fields it at his own 15. He gets a little slot well, across was the 30. Well, that was by number 11, Fiorello. Well, you could, you could see how he was just looking for that seam and just looking to get upfield. Tackles made by number 33, Kyle and Tobin. Kyle Tobin just, just closed the door on him. First and 10, Westford from their 31. Okay, prevent defense here. What do we have, an A-B timeout? Well, we've got Chelmsford and Lincoln Sudbury to play, so uh, those are going to be two really, really difficult games. I think both those teams are, uh, you know, they, they lost their first games, and then they have not lost since. And uh, I think they're really shaping up to be the uh, Chelmsford certainly not not in the DCL but LS is shaping up to be the real strength in the DCL as usual pretty much every year every year it's AB and LS Waltham hasn't shown much Cambridge hasn't shown anything I really thought Waltham would bring a much more consistent program to the DCL it has not shown that. Yeah, so they've far. got they got plenty of kids. Deacon Hart, look at that ball that it comes at him. Oh, what a play! Deacon Hart's pass intended for number 11, Fiorillo. Great Fiorilla. play, but once again, a great pass. That is the, the the velocity that the ball it leaves the hand. He's really it's impressive. Broken up by uh, Mike Emmerman. Pass is incomplete. It'll be second down. That was a good play by Mike. <laughs> Cassidy with the hand off to number 31. Hand Cassidy off and gets about four. Clock winding down now. 54 yeah, we seconds. Yeah, uh, Joe Murphy in the secondary. And along Westford with, with along with Jackson, four, Jackson Rolls. Westford. I love Brionis. I'll tell you, every time he gets in the game, game yeah. he, just, he, just, he just makes plays. He just makes tackles. Westford still with his first team in. This will be the last play of the game, I would say. Maybe one more after this. We'll see. And 
and give us to Cassidy up the middle. And, and short to number 31, down. Cassidy. And well, that, should, that be should be it. Oh, yeah, Mark. They're, not, they're not trying to get another playoff. That's it, Tim, 27 to 9 AB, tougher than the score. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's been a, it's been a great, great night here. Just a good game of football. I like the way AB rebounded in the second half. But, you know, that's going to do it for today's game. But don't go away just yet. We'll be right back for this, with this quick break and the second half highlights. Stay tuned. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Okay, here come, here come the highlights from the second half. A lot of this is going to be the JT Kelly show. We're going to start right now. First of all, with a good play fake by Matt Cotter. Good block, and look at JT. Once he gets out in the open, there is nobody that's going to catch him. And he's in. That's his. Beautiful score by JT, and you're going to see another one right now, Tim. There's a punt, and JT has to back up and, and gather himself with his balls that bounces, gets behind the coverage, and breaks out to the outside. And watch this, Mark, as he gets wrapped up by three defenders, squirts out of it, spins, and then there's a jersey pull. It's like a tractor <laughs> pull in the nearby fair. As J.D. takes it all the way down. Yeah, I saw that there. at the at Martha's Vineyard, <laughs> at the fair down in Martha's Vineyard. Okay, this one, Matt Cotter, throwing it up. It's going to be a jump ball, and Fitzgerald is going to come down right at the very end of the end zone with one foot in for a Westford interception. That kept Westford in the game there, Mark. And here we go again. Here's a. Delaware and JT Kelly hot. That's uh, Redman, AJ, isn't it? No, that's JT, I believe. Uh, is it, oh, is this Redman? Yeah, uh, Redman, Redman, yeah, Redman. yeah. AJ yeah. with some action here. Once he gets his motor going, that's a tough kid to bring down. AJ with terrific running. All right, here's Gabe Cormier just kind of just running out the string here, but he just keeps running and just sheds a tackler and comes in for the final score and makes it 27 to 9. And we have five days to turn this around and play News and South at AB. Oh boy, you know, it's a great night, beautiful weather, and uh, just now starting to cool down, Mark. But uh, wow, what a game. It's always nice to go into, you know, an arch rival territory here with the great ghosts and all, all the, just the history on this field and come home with a big time victory. So we want to thank our crew tonight, Mark. You know, just, we always have Will Henry, who's just, you know, he, he builds all the spreadsheets and everything else, and we can go through the stats. And then we have Chris Maloney, and we have, uh, you know, just just a whole host of crew here. We have Nikella uh, Pittman and Joe Mitchell and Pat Snow. And in the truck, we have Shane Brown and Rick Degon. And I just want to say to everybody, thank you to our sponsors. And, you know, thanks for watching this presentation of Active TV Sports. We'll be back next week. Well, this Thursday. Yeah. For a great game of the news out here. Okay, we'll see you, folks.